Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of LFGM. Let's fucking go Mets. I always do the fucking like it's a hard fucking. It's not a soft fucking. It's not let's fucking go Mets. And it, it's there's a G there too. It's not fucking. It's fucking. Um, a Mets podcast. What's up, Matthew? How are you? Good, man. How's it going? All good over here. All good in uh, Mets land down in Clover Park. Uh, we are in the midst of spring training. Uh, Mid-March, St. Paddy's Day is here. Dude, we are like right like right on the edge of, of regular season baseball. It feels good. It feels really good. We're there. Um, did, did the Mets or any other teams, did they wear like St. Patrick's Day like green uniforms or something? I saw uh, some like green socks, maybe some green hats, but like nothing nothing crazy. I saw Glasnow actually. I, this has nothing to do with the Mets, but he looked unbelievable when he pitched today uh, yeah. in the green socks. Dude's got some flow. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably the only one that could pull off like – like there's not many – I don't like those uniforms. I don't really like St. Patrick's Day green in general. Um, you but got he's your probably green. one of the few. What's that? You got your green on. I didn't even notice. This is lime green though. This counts. It counts. I have my green pen. <laughs> I, I'm pretty anti-St. Patty's Day too, to be honest. Wow. I, yeah, I don't like it. Nope, nope. This conversation's got to be tabled for another time. Can't I don't like it. I mean, corned beef and cabbage and carrots. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay, how come you have it once a year? You choke it down once a year then. Tradition. That, that shit is like, like – Turkey more birds. than once a year too? For the birds. Cranberry? I mean, you have cranberry in – like you have cranberry once a year too. Stuffing and gravy? This thing you're having that every night of the week. But that should be more of a thing and I've always said that. Nobody so, wants just to have you don't it. Like it doesn't mean that everybody – like you know, half the world doesn't like it. Nobody wants cabbage more than one day a year. It's delicious. It, it's wet lettuce. That's just because that's the way it's cooked. It's <laughs> wet <and> lettuce. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. Let's get into it. Um, first thing, well, this is good. We're setting up for a good, good podcast here because we're going to have lots of debates. Um, first one I would like to have with you is my guy, JD, your guy, Louis G. Who you got at third base? I don't like that you put it like that. I like both. Um, well, but Louis, your guy, you love, you've talked about him so highly for, I would say two years now. Well, yeah. And also, you know, he, I put the tweet out there on our Twitter account, 250 ABs, man. He needs to, he needs to get at bat. Put that out. Nothing got me harder um, than that 22 pitch at bat. And I was just nothing like. got that entire team harder than that 22 pitch at bat, which by the way, I think. The best part of it, he was down 0 2. Yeah, yeah. He was down 0 2, and he saw 20 more pitches. That's insane. I mean, the best part of it was everyone's reaction after <laughs> even from the dugout. Like it was like, like it was <laughs> World Series. They're practicing the World Series celebration again. That was good. That was no, good. Man, that was all time. I agree he needs to see at-bats. He does. He can play, and he's proven to you that he is a defensive stud. And we've known that. I mean, we've watched him play before. And, and I mean, dude, anybody who catches a flying bat like that with not even, you know, batting an eye, I, you can put him out there in the field and he's going to be confident anywhere. Um, he needs to get at-bats and build his confidence at the plate. But, like, where are you taking those at-bats away from? It's build gonna be- confidence, bro. Well, well, I, well, you know, what's his career batting average is what I'm trying to say. It's not ideal. It needs what do you mean it's not ideal? It it, to bring up the average. It's very much uh, normal for a guy that's had probably, what, 300 at-bats in his whole career, if that. I just don't think he's – he. I, I can't believe we're actually debating if he's the starter. You, I, I'm so high on J.D. Davis. I really, I'm not really debating don't. him being a starter or anything. No, but talking. everybody else on Mets Twitter is. Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen yeah. that. 
Listen, you got to see more, obviously. He looks very comfortable up there, but you're talking about a guy that, you know, he does have, um, you know, what, like 200 plate appearances in his whole career. So, you know, it, it, it's a guy brand new in his career, but that's not to say he looks very confident in, like, what he's doing up there at the plate. And um, I don't necessarily think he should be the starter because I think he is someone that is probably, like, more so than anything, I think he's more valuable off the bench. Yeah, uh, especially more than probably like JD. I think JD should be seeing four or five games a week as the starter at third base. You get Guillaume one or two in there, and and then you get him one or two at at the other position, second right, or short, shortstop. Exactly. So he's gonna he'll sprinkle in. I would say mostly at third, but I wouldn't be shocked if he played shortstop. I wouldn't be shocked if he played second base too, although VR is going to play some second base as well. So uh, they have flexibility within this lineup, which is great. Um, I don't necessarily want to see McNeil over there playing third base. So, I, you know, if they have to do a day where McNeil goes and plays, you know, an outfield position, I'm fine with that. Put him in a corner outfield. Not I, You know, it's not – a perfect world, but you can do it for a day here and there and, and to get some guys at bats and to get them in the lineup. So I, I like the flexibility with him on the bench. I, I, I look at him as like, if he can be a Chris Taylor type from the Dodgers for, you remember when Chris Taylor was coming off of the bench for them and he was playing third, he was playing short, he was playing second. He played the corner outfield positions. You, you need a guy like that who can go in and seamlessly play those positions and, and be, you know, not hit like 145 at the plate, like go out there and, and be a major league, you know, put up a major league at bat. And we've seen that from him. So it's very encouraging. I think it's a good sign. I, I just don't, he's not starting over JD Dave. JD Davis is going to be there four or five times a week. Like you said. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, we, we just, you just brought up the Chris Taylor, Taylor comparison. Chris Taylor got five, 600 at bats a few seasons in a row well, with them. They built up with him too. What do you mean built up with him? It's not like he started at five, six hundred at bats. Uh, I mean, no, no one ever does. But I, I mean, I'm looking at Chris Taylor. I just pulled up Chris Taylor's stats right now. I mean, it was three seasons essentially, and he was uh, he was getting 500 plate appearances. So yeah, just like Giorme. So I mean, I don't I don't need to see him up at the plate 500 times. I don't know if he's there or will ever be there. But, I mean, he's someone that needs to get at-bats. I wouldn't move McNeil or any of the starters around. Like, I'm not going to move McNeil to the outfield just to get him an at-bat. You're just going to have to give guys probably more days off just because of the difference in the games played last year and this year. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, and, and we've brought that up before too. It's it's not going to be an easy transition going from sixty games to one sixty two, or just not going to be an easy transition from going zero games to one sixty two. And so, a lot of these guys, it's going to feel like a, an absolute fucking marathon. And I know a lot of them have done one sixty two before, and they know what to expect. But we're coming off of something we've never seen before, and I, I think you're going to have to. I hate to use this term because I hate that the NBA does it, but there's got to be some sort of load management taking into account with guys at bats and innings played and, and so on and so forth. You're going to have to be careful with guys, especially guys that you need long-term. If somebody even, you know, is sore one day, like we saw with Dom Smith today, he had a sore wrist. Dude, you're done. Sit, relax, enjoy the day. We have some depth you know, let's use it. Let's be smart about this. Well, yeah, I mean, these guys are going to be playing 60 games in the, in two and a half months. So you're going to see plenty of Guillaume and, and VR and you'll, uh, you know, they'll get there plenty of time. I mean, I, I actually do wonder because, you know, you're not going to sit Pete often, but it's going to happen because, again, oh, yeah. load management. But, like, do you put Guillaume over there or do you put – Dom Smith over there and like, you know, and then put someone else, you know, back up in the outfield. Yeah. I would imagine that's a Dom Smith at first base a day. And then maybe Pilar goes and plays center and Nimmo goes over to a corner outfield, something like that. 
And that, that's yeah. a good way that to, you get Pilar into the lineup too that way too. But, I, but these guys, it's not like, I think we have to change the view. And it, you said it where it's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not moving McNeil to the outfield just to get you or me at bats. I agree, but there, there's going to be days where, uh, you know, maybe you need Guillaume and uh, Villar, and uh, I'm messing up the Pilar and VR. Maybe you need Guillaume and VR in the lineup at the same time to give some guys some days. We have the depth to do it. I don't see it as, um, I don't see it as, as a negative thing if that means McNeil has to go play in the outfield for a day. You know. Yeah, it's all good. You got to remember too. I mean, we'll be facing like AL teams where the DH is going to be needed and all Ooh. that. So, oh, that's, yeah. you know, and I, I think that happens like relatively early. I don't think it's like, yeah. you know, I don't think we're waiting till June or July for yes. that. They used to do that. Remember that? Where it was like, it's interleague play. Not anymore. Yeah. It's sprinkled in throughout the entire schedule. Well, I was like wondering, I was like, would they go back to that? with everything going on and just try to, you know, just because, you know, but I guess it doesn't matter if it's a team that's on the East coast, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the Yankees, the Red Sox, whatever, you know, that's closer than some playing a team like the Padres. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. Um, anyways, speaking of, I guess we'll call them like, I don't want to call them like starting battles. Cause like JD Davis and Luis Guillaume, I don't think is like a, like a starting, you know, I don't think it's really up for debate. The the pitching rotation is. Um, you're going to have to mix and match some guys here at the end of the rotation because it sounds like Carrasco is iffy on if he's going to be ready for opening day. He claims he's going to be ready for opening day. I, I don't see how that's possible. It's March 17th, and uh, we haven't really seen him yet. Um I don't know how you ramp a guy up in two weeks and get him ready for opening day. So, and like we have the depth that there's no rush here. So um, I'm going to give you some stats. I'm not going to tell you who it's from. And then you have to, you have to tell me which stats you're taking as your fourth and fifth starters. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. This is, we'll call this person a person. A has thrown eight and a third innings has given up, one earned run and has five strikeouts this spring. Okay. Got that? Sure. Person B has pitched five innings, has not allowed a run and has seven strikeouts through five. I mean, that's like, I got one. It's, more. it's like, what do you want me to? I kind of do need to know the names because it's like that person with the five innings can just go eight and a third and have the same exact stats as that guy. So <laughs> well, they already have more strikeouts. So, and well, person B, this or person C, I'm sorry, this is where it's going to get interesting. Six innings pitched, has a four five ERA, and only one strikeout through six innings. Yeah, I mean, like it depends. Like we need a lefty in there, right? So you yep. have with PC and Peterson. Um, you know, Peterson did have the really bad start. I believe it was Sunday or something. It was over the weekend, so it's clearly that it's you know it, it's him. Yeah, he's the um, he's the le- he's person C. Luke Casey. Yeah. Well, he had the bad – yeah, he had a bad outing on Sunday. But it's like, dude, it's 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 early and it's not early because it's like, well, Lucchese could go throw three innings five days from now because he just pitched and and give up four or five right. and be, have the same exact year, right? So, yeah. you know, that's tough. I'm not, I'm not here – I'm honestly not here to crown any of them or anoint any of them anything. Yeah, it goes to the very end. You know, That's fair. you brought up you brought up the lefty point. Um, one of the one of the lefties has got to be. I, I mean, you would think it's Peterson, but who knows? There, I, to me, it's like really, there's just no wrong answer. It's w- whatever they want to do. Um, I I don't see like a bad option here for your fifth starter. Um, I I would probably lean 
Yamamoto right now. Um, just seems like he's stretched out a little bit more. But, like, again, they could do this where it's maybe Yamamoto throws three innings and Lucchese throws three innings and you're pairing them back and back to back, something like that. Um, but it's just interesting to look at the stats. Like, spin training stats don't mean much, but they are what they are, you know. And, and you brought up the point it's getting uh, it's getting late fast. I'm a bit of a visual guy too. Like I do like to see yeah. these guys throw and see how it goes and like a little bit more than looking at numbers. And I only saw like each of them once. I only saw Yamamoto once. Also mainly because these fucking games are like impossible to find. Like Dude, it's so bad. It's so bad. First I don't of- remember it being this bad, right? No, it's never been this bad. You would think because they're selling like a spring training MLB TV package. So they want people to buy it for 50 Is that bucks. what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why they're not Ooh. on SPY. And that's also why when people are like, why can't I watch Jacob DeGrom pitch? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Those games are purposely pulled for the and, – and like they – they know what opening day is. That's, That's why. Five days each time. But no, those games are pulled for MLB TV. It's not like an SNY is doing this on purpose. Those games are pulled for MLB TV. It's like That's 50 insane, bucks for dude. the training package. It's stupid. But, but like it drives me crazy. And I've had this happen to me the last two weekends. And I, I punched my computer the second. <laughs> because it is insane. When you don't have cable and you rely like – a lot of like I usually well, you're get on the apps. you're on the apps, but yeah, but like I get you know now I'm working with a Fire Stick with some apps, and you know when a game's on WPIX eleven, I didn't get the app so because I was like I don't know if they have one. I think they do, but I was like whatever. Let me just go on the website and I'll just sign in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then it'll pull up. No, it doesn't pull up. I no, had to they black it out. Dude, it, they kept showing me the weather every time I, I clicked to sign in. I was like, dude, if you, if you think I'm signing up for the weather, if you think I'm signing into this account for the weather, you got another thing coming. Matt, like, loves, Matt loves high and low pressure fronts. <laughs> give me give me what I want. So it did it for the third time. I lost it, and I had to like uh, find a stream. I found a stream. They, so thinking. what they do is they black those games out on purpose. So like you can't watch it on that app. They're they're it's like a, they really it's like dirt dude, bag. The NFL is everywhere. You want to watch the NFL, you can find it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Same with the NBA. Same with I mean hockey's a little tougher because you don't see as many people like searching for it, but hockey you can find. Baseball is the worst, dude. They, they have the shit on lockdown. They don't give up anything anything it's really bad it's really but bad. it's this is a new thing is a spring training thing i didn't yeah. know they were right this is new because i don't remember ever finding that. dude this yeah, has been you, so like, difficult. you can do like a seven day free trial for mlb tv yeah, you, go fuck you gotta make sure you you gotta make sure you cancel your account anyway um you were talking about how you're more of a visual guy with pitchers in in a uh, spring training so how does a 102 mile an hour fastball sit with you, Maddie? I was watching Jake the other day. And I'm like, maybe you should, maybe you should tone it down a little bit. Like it's only spring, man. But and then, then I like, he doesn't have that in him. He doesn't know how to do that. He's going up there. He's going to rev it up. He's going to go pitch three, four innings, whatever. He's going to get stretched out. He threw a 94 mile an hour slider. Yeah, well, stupid. I love it. No pitchers have that in them to slow down. That's yeah. I hate when people say that's that. why. Yeah, yeah, it's like crazy. Myself about it. It's like, dude, you can't. If you slow down your arm, you probably will get hurt. Like yeah. whether you throw ninety two or one hundred two, you don't slow down. You go, you know. You, yeah. You don't why would you like it. changing mechanics then? It's you. You don't want to mess with that stuff. Right, exactly, exactly. And then if you're overthrowing, you usually don't throw that hard anyway. So yeah, it goes up and away, up and away, up and away. And the mechanics are off. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, dude, he looks he looks incredible. I mean, all he needs, honestly, is a World Series, and he's he's the greatest of all time for Mets. Really, you'd put him ahead yeah. of Seaver. Yeah. Wow. I wasn't there for Seaver. No one was, but yeah, I I also. I'm more of a new era guy where I do think 
it's harder it's to a tough generation to play. Dude, sure. it's hard to pitch against these guys. Yeah. They're beasts. Yeah. Um, you know, not to take anything away from Seaver, but you do see batters from that period, and they just got the, you know, like they're, <laughs> they they got the <laughs> swings that I'm like, ah, yeah. Eh, eh. um, so here's the number I, I, yeah. run, nine innings, three hits, one earned run, one walk, sixteen strikeouts, one six. It's, I mean, that's an impressive number through nine innings. Yeah, you just like you want them to definitely save all of that for the regular season. Right, right. I think but the big thing is like – You can do, man. He's got to be so motivated by Trevor Bauer. I, I just feel like in the back of his head, like that's – like he probably has a picture of Trevor Bauer like somewhere in his, on his phone that he just stares at and like gets all revved up. Like this motherfucker took my Cy Young and I'm going to go get it back. It has oh, nothing okay. to do with like signing here, or not signing here. Like, like I wanted that Cy Young. He got that Cy Young. I'm going to get what belongs to me back. <laughs> There's, I would. He's going to be a scary man to face all year. Well, he saw last year how one out and kind of changed the course of his of yeah. him not winning a Cy Young. So you know Which things like that. Six innings in four runs. Yeah, yeah, but and, but things like that, you know. That, that can, you know, make you realize as a pitcher and as a competitor, like, yeah, no, this – every inning counts, every start counts. And, um, yeah, he definitely looks dialed in. For sure. And so, you know, another interesting – or um, I guess I'll say another few people that look dialed in um, – during the rest of that game against the Astros, were uh, we had some home runs, man, which was nice to see. We had a dom bomb, we had Big Meat Pete uh, hitting a, a pistol, and then uh, we had uh, Frankie Lindor. Oh, I can't say Frankie. Francisco, Francisco, Francisco hit a, a home run too. Uh, so we had three home runs from uh, three big bats in the lineup, uh, which was really exciting. That was fun to see too. Alonzo's been raking. He looks real good. Yeah, right. he looked, you know what Chili said? Someone asked Chili about, uh, you know, what what are the differences that you see? He was like, oh, I think 2019 Pete back. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got out of Chili. <laughs> it was great. It, dude, yeah, I mean, I hate people holding seasons last year. I last know, right, because he had 100 more games. Yeah, and he was on pace for 40-something homers and 100-something right. RBI. Like, it's it's like, all right, man. Like, it wasn't really that bad of a season. I do think, though, like the eye test, right? Like, last year he was – I think he put a lot of pressure on himself. He had yeah. Not – there wasn't as much help in the lineup as he has this year. Like, he put too much pressure on himself. And he's swinging out of pitches that were out of the zone. This year, like, dude, take your walks, man. And I think yeah. – Seeing him with a, a better, you know, plate discipline and a better approach up there, and and dude, if you walk, great. Let the next guy take care of business for you. Yeah, he looks way more relaxed. And then you know, the the guys that he has behind him. Not only did we you know add guys, but these young guys are getting better. Like you're talking yeah, like yeah. Tom Smith might hit forty. He might hit forty. Might hit thirty five. Whatever. Um, but he looks that good when you, you know. It is. I was like, yeah, he looks good. Looks real good. I'm excited for Dom for a full season. You know who loves Dom? I didn't know this until the other day. I didn't. Um, Carabas loves Dom Smith. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're like buddy buddy on Twitter, I guess. Um, but it was it was exciting to see them hit some home runs. It felt like the last few days, like we saw the the like the actual starting lineup and like how they're going to do things in in the order um and, and it was uh it was good to see it was nice to see, like we're we're there we're almost there um another thing that was exciting for me to see maybe i mean you're not going to say i told you so based off of spring training but my guy miguel castro he looks good man yeah i mean does he has does he have a shot though I guess he has a shot, right? I mean, does he have options? Because that, I mean, if he has the options, he's going to be in AAA. Yeah, I believe he does have an option or two. 
Four innings, no hits, no runs, one walk, four strikeouts. Dude, when he is throwing strikes, that and and his off-speed stuff has so much movement. When he throws strikes, he's fucking dirty, man. He is almost untouchable. Problem is, we got to be a little bit more consistent. And I, I feel like he's, you know, granted it's only four innings, but he's – He's trying to he's, – he's showing it. He's been working on it. You can tell. I think he's – I told you this. This was maybe Brody's last move, one of his last moves. Um, yeah, who did we Who did we get rid of for him? Something with the Orioles. I don't remember. Yeah, I know he came from the Orioles because of those horrible cleats. But I, I don't think we gave up much for him. Um, he – if he does anything the way he, he's – looked recently if he puts that performance on and does well like this i mean we don't have to worry about someone like batantes or familia contributing to this team honestly if because if he contributes you could put one of those like send send one of those guys home we sent a left-handed pitcher kevin smith to the orioles he was our 12th ranked prospect at the time yeah so it's a wait and see thing man i mean Mm -hmm. like who knows what what Brody gave up? <laughs> Brody. God only knows with Brody. Um, I guess this segues kind of nicely into some, I guess you know, roster moves. We'll say, but uh, Sam McWilliams, Stephen A. Cohen's first ever signing as owner of the Mets, uh, and Khalil Lee were sent down to AAA to start the season. I like Khalil Lee. I, I thought uh, good depth move. That was a Honestly, a really good trade. Um, you can pretty much say we got Matt's Reed Foley, uh, and and uh, in the Khalil Lee uh, with the Khalil Lee move. But I liked him. I like the speed he brings. I like the, the different dynamic he brings. He plays a good outfield. Uh, he'll be a depth player this year, but we'll see what he's got moving forward. Sam McWilliams, I'm interested. I'm still really intrigued about him. Um, dude's got good stuff. Um, again, the options are going to be good, uh, moving people around in the bullpen. Um, I, I really, I can't wait to see what he brings this year. He, he, to me is a big wild card and I would re I'm really interested to see what happens with him. Well, both of those guys that got sent down young and talented, maybe, uh, long shots to make a team. They would have had to really kill sure. it, honestly, to make the team, but you know, they had a, you know, the run or like enough, you know, enough reps to kill it and and you know that's fine we i don't expect them to make the team but like they they could definitely be productive major league players for us this season and, and i think moving forward khalil lee has has a bright future with this club sam mcwilliams i think to be determined yeah i mean i think uh i you know i don't know if we we could see him this year. I, I think obviously we could, we're more likely in my opinion to see McWilliams just being a pitcher, but um, you know, if injuries happen and all that stuff, obviously Lee could come up too, but you know, both guys need seasoning. doesn't hurt to play triple a, um, even if it's for the whole year, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Just get reps, get better, get stronger. They're young, man. They're young. Khalil Lee, you could like, you could see he's, he's, He's raw, but he's going to be good. Um, I, I, I like him. I think he's dynamic. I think he'll be pretty good for us. Um, there's one other thing I just thought of. Um, the Mets announced their coaches for the year. Um, I'm trying to see if I could find it really quick. Like even the minor league coaches. Some of it was funny. Like I saw here's a here's a blast from the past. Are you ready? Royce Ring. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. What does he do? Reed, he's uh he's he's one of the minor league coaches. I'm trying to see if I can find it real quick. Like a pitching coach, right? Not the manager? I don't know. Let's see. I, I think I just found it. Dude, he was someone that like was supposed to be really good and just, you know. Injuries happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's a pitching coach. That's what his LinkedIn says. Um, there's another one, too. Uh, Reed Brignac. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Dude, I liked him when he was with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. He was 
great defensively. Yeah, he was. Defensively. You know, slap hitter didn't really hit much, but um, I uh, I always thought he was pretty legit. So that's cool. I didn't know he was uh, coaching for us. I can't find it. Yeah, I feel like you made that up. I did not make this up. No, oh, it's a – oh, he's a manager, dude. I told you. For Columbia. The uh, the Fireflies, right? That's what they're that, called. Yeah, that's, that's where um, – that's where Tebow was for a while. <laughs> dude, that's, that's cool. I like that. He was, you know, he played all over the place for them. Um, he's a young guy. Um, trying to think there's someone else too. Oh yeah. The, uh, are, so it, it's weird. I don't know if this has to do with like the, uh, sh- ownership change or whatever, but we do have like a few different managers for, uh, all throughout the minor leagues. Yeah, man. Um, so the big one was, uh, when Edgardo left. Yeah. So Ed Blankenship has taken that over. Um, and I guess he was supposed to actually take over last year, but then they didn't have a season. So he is the um, the manager for uh, what's it called? Um, Coney Island, right? Is it Coney Island? Uh, no, it's the Brooklyn Cyclones. Brooklyn Cyclones. I guess that it is, is that Coney. It is Island. Coney Island, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, I. Yeah, so he's the manager for the Brooklyn Cyclones, and he came from St. John's. He was the head coach at St. John's for like yeah, I knew that name sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's pretty well known in uh, Northeast baseball over here, especially like he's developed a ton of talent. Where St. John's constantly would always have a few guys go in the draft. So he's he's very well known around here, and um, that'll be interesting too. Yeah, it's it's there's some some guy. I'm, I still can't find it. I, I saw it somewhere. I know I did. Oh, you ready? Um, uh, Andy Chavez is a, is a bench coach. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I. Uh, no, I was a little surprised by that. Oh really? Yeah. No, I saw that. I think I saw that like uh, a couple weeks ago when he like dove in the snow. Um, yes, I did see that, that the diving in the snow. But was that for? I don't know. I think he was with his coaching staff during that during that time. Like I think they were getting ready and everything. So it's good, man. It's you know fresh blood. It's a lot of young guys for coaching. I think, I think a lot of the younger guys too are, and I guess you'll see this a little bit more. But they're they're analytically driven. I, I think was some of the biggest. Uh, some of the bigger reasons why, you know, they, they made the changes that they did. Um, and realistically, they could probably be taught to be anal- analytically driven too. Yes. Um, yes. You know, if you have someone who's 35, 36, like Brignac or um, even Chavez, you know, those guys came up a little bit later as analytics were coming into to play a little bit when they were players. And then, um, you know, the, the Mets can kind of mold their own, version of them by uh giving them more information and you know kind of guiding them throughout exactly so it'll be good i'm I'm, you know get these get these young guys playing playing hard playing fast playing smart use the analytics those the minor league rule changes that'll be interesting to keep an eye on too down there Um, it's weird right because like no pickoffs, but then get called to the big leagues and then don't let anyone steal on you. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't add up. That's tough. That's uh, that's not helping them but develop you, at all. You practice something if you've never done it, right? Like right. So they, I would assume, they would still be practicing it, but then it goes away once you start playing right. six games a week on the road. Man, that's another. I don't, I don't to think about. Love that. You know who would love it? You know who would love that? John Lester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's not going to happen in the majors, right? So it's like, what is the point? It, it just doesn't get these kids ready. So yeah, you'll, right. maybe it's to 
see steals go up because they are exciting in the majors. I don't it's know. Thrilling. There's nothing like a guy trying to snag a base, and the but cat if, uh, goes on there. That one. Um, that one threw me for a loop for a bit. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. Like how how it's scaffolded into the major league game. Like the, some of these guys that get called up are not going to practice it. So it'll be interesting to see if anything happens in the major league level that we can attest is directly attributed to not having done it in the minors. Uh, right. So that, that's, uh, that's interesting. That's a good point. I don't know. I do feel like we just went off on a like 10 minute tangent there about nothing, but that was exciting. We talked maybe a little bit of minor league Mets and then some rule changes, but that was good. That was good. Was good. You got anything else? I got nothing, man. I'm, I'm no, I mean, I'm ready for the regular season at this point, we got to get Carrasco. We got to get him going. Let's sign Lindor. I know there's nothing more to say than just sign Lindor. We were talking about this yeah. before. Like, Hey, we're talking great. Get it done. Yeah, that's all. That's all. And even when it does happen, it's like, all right, cool, good. Yeah, that's what good should job. happen. So like, we're in agreement like, with that. Yeah, it's like an expectation at this point. Like, I'm, I'm not like, oh yeah, like you guys did the right thing. It's like, nope, you, you did what you were supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's good to just kind of go off like this, especially with spring training. You know, we still got two more weeks of this, and then, I know. then comes the fun part where we could actually talk about games and stuff. Yeah, man. I am ex- I am thrilled about that. I am ready for that. Take yeah. take like a, a freaking like three pages of notes throughout the week and come hit you with my my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean we should I mean next week I would imagine at this point we would probably find out a little bit more about Carrasco. But other than that, you know, yeah, it'll it'll be a slow couple weeks, couple couple more guys will go down. Yep. Um I'm sure Pete Crow Armstrong at some point will go down, but he's legit. Not? I thought he was already. I saw him on Sunday playing. Huh. Yeah. Dude can fly. He's pretty good out there. Yeah, man. So. Draft's got to be coming up soon too, right? When's the draft? Draft's in June, so that's a ways away. I thought it was closer than that. I thought it was April. All right, well. If you don't got anything, I'm good. Yeah, that's it, man. All right, folks. Let's put another one in the books.